I refuse to doubt. I will leave spiritually. Because, Lord Jesus, there is a testimony that somebody needs to bring forth. Hallelujah. Somebody need to explain about the goodness of the Lord. Then Jesus said unto him, Go and do 
and do thou likewise. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to speak to you on the mission. There is a mission. We have a mission. Amen. We have a mission. We are on a mission. We are on a mission. Amen. We are on a mission. You may be seated. We are on a mission. You know, there are many, many, many reasons. And I always say this. There's many reasons why we are in the house. There's many reasons why we are Christians. That, that to bring it in the simple way. They are in the house of the Lord, if you ask, I think even here, if you ask, if you go deep, if you, go, if you ask everybody, oh, why are you in the house of the Lord? Oh, you know, because I love Jesus, I want you to be saved. Everybody will tell you that, amen? But <laughs> God, because God knows the heart of, of his people, he say, he look in the heart. But if you want to read in the heart of people, there are many reasons why people are here. There are many reasons why we give our life to the Lord. There are many reasons why people are in the house of the Lord. That is, sometimes it might be sound crazy, but it's, it's true. If you open the heart of people, you may, the reason why they are in the church may make you fall. On this, on the, on the, you know? But there's one thing we need to know. I don't want to get into detail because that is not my, uh, the, 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 the point I want to make today. But what I want to tell you is, no matter what you think or what you are here, or what you are a child of God, what you read your Bible, what you pray, <laughs> the, re the main reason has to be eternal life. Uh, I listened. Amen. The main reason why you give your life to, live to, to the Lord has to be to inherit the eternal life. Yes, and that is the question you need to ask yourself daily. What should I do to inherit the, the, life, the eternal life? You see what I'm trying to tell you? Because there are people in this earth, they are Christians, but they, don't, they, don't much, they are not much caring about eternal life. They are caring more about their their portion, their 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 their, their, their wish, their their their, 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 their how do we say that in English? They are more caring about their comfort. Amen. They are more caring about satisfy the loss of the flesh, about satisfy the desire of the flesh. And most of the time, we think that the desire of the flesh will is the desire of God. That means that. Uh, yeah, I, that the desire of the flesh will bring them to heaven. I'm here to tell you today that hey, the desire of the flesh and already is different to the desire of the of the spirit. Amen. And what will bring you in, in eternal life is to live in a spirit in according the spirit. We preach we preach it last Sunday, last Friday. We will do we'll, 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 We'll teach on it again next Friday. But the thing I want, the point I want to make here today is what make me, what a, a Christian, if you are a child of God, if you if, if if you call yourself Christian, if you take time to pray, that means that hey, you need to have something to focus. And the thing that you need to have in, in on focus is eternal life. And if you have eternal life on focus, then you will start to look after what God loves. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Amen? Amen. So, uh, the main reason is we have to, to, we have to, we have to look after eternal life. What should I do to be saved? How should I do to remain saved? Because there are some people they don't even think that uh, they can lose their salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, you know, sometimes we are getting crazy. Sometimes we are doing foolishness because we don't have the conscious of the consequence of what we are doing. Because if I know why, I why, what would be the consequence? The thing is, I need to know what keep me in eternity, what keep me in the presence of God, what keep me, what keep my salvation uh, uh, saved. I need to know that. 
Because if I know that, I will, I will ultimately know that there are certain things that when I do, that will, that will put my salvation or my eternal life in danger. And that is something we need to be aware of. May somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And this man here says, <laughs> he wanted, the Bible said, this lawyer wanted to prove Jesus. He said, what you all do? You know, sometimes we are here in this house and we want to prove people. We, do, we, just, we, we just do like there are people in the house of the Lord. They are just playing games. Hallelujah. In another moment, this man was playing games with the Lord. He was playing games. What you all do to be saved? What you all do? I think that in the in that everybody knows at least what to do to be saved. But there are people who play games, they convince themselves. And Jesus told him, but you know what is written. You know the law. You know what is written. And he said, Yes, I know. He, I, he, he, he said what was written. The first the first commandment. And the Bible, even Jesus would say that this commandment, that all the law was given to Moses are in two, in two command, in two, in two, these two commandments. The first is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. He was right, the Lord thy God is one Lord. Thou shalt love him with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Amen? With all thy strength. That is the first commandment. Amen? And, the, and the, the, the Jesus will say that that is the first commandment, but also the most important commandment. And he said that the second commandment, who was, was most like this one, who was like this one, is that he was confirmed, love your neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So all the commandments, all, 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 <coughs> all what you need to do to be saved is into these two commandments. Two commandments, not ten, not twenty, not eleven, not, <coughs> not seventeen. Is on these two commandments. Because if you keep these two commandments and if you keep it well, then you will you will obey the whole law. You will be in the grace. What you are, what I'm trying to tell you is this: If you love God more than everything, Hallelujah, you will always be in the Spirit. You will always walk after the Spirit. Because loving God, hallelujah, you, you will be, loving God will make you, he, he will look after, after the nature of God. To make you, to make you look after, to be like him more than him. Are you getting what I'm, I'm trying to tell you? God is spirit. So if you love God with all your strength, with all your heart, then no matter how, no matter how, you will be you will be pushed in the spiritual, in the spiritual things, in the spirit. And then you will start walking after the spirit because all what will you all your focus, all 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 all, all you will will be to follow him or to obey him because loving God is obeying God in all means. And now if you obey God in all means, and if you love God in all means, and if you want to please God in all means, that means that at the end of the day, you will start producing the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is something you grab in the Spirit, but you bring that to all people. If you love God, and you walk up, that means that you will walk after the Spirit. So that, in consequence, you will produce the fruit of the Spirit. And the consequence of that is that you will show love with one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God is not a hater. Amen. Then God is a lover. Amen. So you will produce love. Amen. God is patient. So you will produce patience. What, should, what are the fruit of the Spirit are for? The spirit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit are there so that I can reflect the life of Christ around me. Hallelujah. Amen. The fruit of the spirit is not for me. It is for me. It is me dwelling in the in my dwelling in my surrounding. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you today? Amen. Are you getting this? 
Let, let me bring Galash 5 and then we will continue. I want to be, I don't want to be very long today, amen. Galatians 5, we are receiving Galatians. Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Amen. Law, I can if I have love in me, I need to share it with people. Amen. The love of God was manifest toward us. That means that God loves us and He manifests that love. So if I have love in me, this love me need to be manifested. Manifested to whom? To my surroundings, to my to people around me. Amen. To my neighbors. Amen. If I have long suffering, if I have peace, if I have peace with me, with me if I have peace inside me, then it's something that I, I need to spread with other people. I need to share that peace with other people. Amen. Hallelujah. So and so and so and so and so. Amen. Long suffering. What is long suffering? Passion. Long suffering is patience. Patience. Patience towards who? Toward my surroundings. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Gentleness. If I <coughs> I'm a gentleman, if I'm like a, a, a gentry, gentle, 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 gentleman. If I'm a gentleman, it's for me. All, only for me? No. It's it's it's. It has to be reflected to us. Amen? You see what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that the fruit of the Spirit has to be spread among us. That's why I always tell you here, look, if you love God, if you love God, you obey God, and you love your neighbor, at least you will cover all the other commandments. Because if you do that, you will be led by the Spirit. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So if you are led by the Spirit, then you, you everything that you will do, will do with you will be around loving God and loving your neighbors. That means that you will obey God, the commandment of God so easily. Is somebody <coughs> but let me tell you something. So I'm on the mission. I'm on a mission. What is my mission in this earth? I will, I will shock you perhaps. But my, 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 my mission in this earth is to work on my salvation. My mission in this world is to keep myself, to keep the eternal life. That is my mission. I'm on the mission. My mission in this earth is, to, is eternal life, is to gain eternal life. Hallelujah. Because if I gain everything in this earth, if I, if I gain everything in this earth, and I lose my, I lose, I lose my soul, then I did nothing. So my, my, my goal in this way, my mission in this way, is to keep my soul clean, is to keep my soul, my soul holy. My, my mission in this earth is to keep myself holy until Jesus comes back. Can somebody say amen? Hello. Hallelujah. So that is your mission. Perhaps you don't know. There are people that think, oh, my mission in this earth is to live, to live, to live an heritage for my children. No. Yes, you might do to do so, but if you even if you do so and you lose your you, you, you lose your life, your soul, then you did nothing. I mean, so your 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 work in this earth was on vain. Because I strongly believe that I was that Jesus, that God, that Jesus made me born in this earth because He wanted to save me. This, God, God, God didn't want me to keep to, to remain in the bosom of my mother because I think that if I if, if it was that if it was so I would never go to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. It might be shocking what I'm trying to tell you, but the Bible says that we are sanctified. Parents. So if your parents are not really Christian when you're born, <laughs> it's a problem. Amen. That's why I mean, I mean, I mean it really. The reason why I'm in this earth, the reason why I was born, is to prepare eternal life. God wanted me to have eternal life. That's why He brought me in this earth so that I can prepare the next earth. Is somebody saying? 
Hallelujah. So you are on a mission, brothers and sisters. You are on a mission. We are all on a mission. And this mission, the first mission we are in is to keep our salvation. Amen? Hallelujah. But there's something we need to understand. This man, when he spoke to Jesus, Jesus gave him a right answer. But, you know, it's always like this. When somebody don't want to obey, they're always I agree. I agree. Hallelujah. If I don't want to obey, it's always I will always bring birth. Birth. But, but, but let's see, but who is my neighbor then? How should I show love to my neighbors? But who is my neighbors then? Hallelujah. And I want to focus, I don't want to, to, to take that in another level to, 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 to look deep in Revelation. But I just wanted to tell you one thing, and that is the mission. You know, your neighbor. Your neighbor is somebody who is in need. Amen. You know, because when he asked the question to Jesus, Jesus spoke, he said, Oh, a certain man, a certain man. <coughs> he said, a certain man went down from Jericho to from Jerusalem to Jericho. He started his story by a certain man. Who is your neighbor? And if when you read all the story, he would take this person past the 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 the, 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 the high priest went by the summer the 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 the, 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 the uh, the, uh, the Levite went by, but the, and the, the, the Samaritan went by. But that, ne that never changed the fact that it was all about a certain man. Are you getting me? It was about a certain man who, who got into a trouble, who got into trouble and who was in need. Amen? A certain man. Your neighbor is that certain man who was going to one place for, and to another place, for Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho. The certain man is your neighbor. It's a, 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 this certain man is the person next to you. The certain man is your, is your, is your, is your neighbor at home. Is the is the one you are sitting next to in the bus train. Is the is your, is your co-worker at work. The, this certain man is, is, is somebody is the man that when you go in the, to to make um, to buy things in the in the supermarket is the one who's next to you buying also something. The next man is the is the is, is this woman and the and the, uh, when you buy at the castle. So the next the next person to you the next one is anyone you see on the road is the next man. Is that certain man? It's your neighbor that you need to show some love. You know, this neighbor, why do, why do I tell you this? Because the Bible says he got into the hand of the thieves. Everyone who has not yet redeemed by the blood of Jesus has is in the hand of who? Of the devil. If you are, if you are a sinner, who is your master? If you're a sinner, who is your master? It's the devil. It's the devil. So you are, <coughs> who is the master of the world? It's the devil. So the certain man, no matter what, which man you see on the road who don't know Jesus, is in the hand of the devil. And what the Bible teaches us about the devil, the Bible says that the devil is like a thief who just come to, to kill and to to destroy. So, <coughs> the certain man that this Bible is speaking about is your neighbor who is in the hands, who fell in the hands 
of a thief called the devil that this because this devil wanted to kill him to kill want to kill him and to destroy him so now if i if i if i see any man walking in the road or any woman walking in the road who don't know jesus as a as a as this certain man who fall in the grief of the devil or a, of a thief who is wounded who is blinded who need help now i may understand to me oh now which kind of neighbor i want to be which kind of person which kind of compassion i want to do you know every time that you see somebody who don't know jesus and you know that he don't know jesus you don't say nothing to him it's just as you are going to another road you're just crossing to another road you look oh he's in the problem you know oh he's the hand of the thief they beat him the 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 the, 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 the devil beat him blind him he uh, but oh I'm, a, I'm like a high priest. I'm holy. You know who is the high priest? The Bible says it's very basic. The Bible says we are all priests, right? Amen. The Bible says we are all priests. Huh? Don't you know that we are all priests? Mm -hmm. Do I need to refer to 1 Peter 2 19? We are, we are, but we are, we are, ah, uh, two nine, no, nine, two nine. But we are a chosen generation, a royal, a royal priesthood. So if you are a chosen generation, if you are a, ro a royal priesthood, that means that you are a priest. Amen. A royal priest. Amen. 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 So, and you are as a wild priest, hmm? full of the Holy Ghost, dancing in the spirit, jumping in the spirit, and you see somebody going to the somebody who died in the hand of that thief called the devil. <coughs> And you pass by, you just pass by, you just do your thing, you just pass down. I don't have time, I have to go to church. I don't have time, I have to do this. I don't have time, I have to do this. You see what I'm trying to tell you, brother? I'm trying to tell you that we are on a mission. We need to keep our salvation. And to keep our salvation, we need to love our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I cannot love only my neighbors if I take care of any man, but let the certain man alone. This certain man, this certain man who is walking, who is wounded in the hands of the devil, that's where God will see if I really have love in me. So I just want to remind you that when, when, we, when we just come here and say, oh, brother, we need to bring the gospel around us. We need to be evangelists around us. It's not because only because we want to say, we want, it's just not because we want to fill this house with people. It's because we are on mission to keep our salvation <coughs> And the Bible says, love your neighbors as yourself. So if I don't love my neighbors, I'm in trouble. I might be a high priest. I might be a priest, a royal priest. If I don't have the burden that I see my brother down and I say, hey, I need to take time. I need to take time to take care of him. I need to take time to bring him the gospel. I need to take time to speak about here about Jesus. Hallelujah. You might 
might be, you might say, oh, I'm not the priest. I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not, I'm, I'm not yet the, the priest is the pastor. The priest is the priest. Is the, you know, it's, it's, you know when, when we don't want to do something, we find an excuse. It's not my job. It's the job of somebody else. Perhaps you are not, the, you are not, you don't want to be a, a priest, as the Bible says. You say, okay, I'm not the priest. But if you are not the priest, you might be the, the, the Samaritan. The, not the Samaritan, the, the Levite. If you call yourself, if you are so religious, if you are even religious, then say you might be a, a, a Levite. Because who, what was the, what, what was the, what was the, the role? What was the role of the Levite? The Levite was there to praise God, to do the work of God. So perhaps you say, okay, I'm not the priest, but I'm the Levite. But if you are a Levite, at least you have to be a Levite because you have to be glory to God. Who here don't want to don't know how don't want to give glory to God or don't know that it has to give praise to God? So even if you are a priest, if you are, if you say that you are not a priest or glory to God, you are the holy, you might be but a sister, a Levite. Huh? And as a Levite, what would you do? You would say, oh, the only thing what, what is so important for me is to give God the praise. Just God the praise. Just God. Hallelujah. Brother and sister, I'm here to tell you this. If you are a priest, and you don't want to give, you want you don't want to you don't know how to love your you don't you don't want to love your neighbors. Somebody who is wounded, who is in the hands of the devil, of the great thief. You refuse to say, okay, leave her. Then if you are not if not even in one, you, don't, you don't recognize yourself into the book, then you might recognize yourself as a Samaritan. The Samaritan was a man. The Bible says the Samaritan, the Samaritan, perhaps he was also a man. He was going, he was making his journey. Perhaps he was on his way looking for Jesus. For us, he was in the way going to the temple. We don't know where he was going. But when he got there, he let everything that he was doing, his focus, he stopped his journey. He stopped. He stopped. You know, seeing somebody in danger, if seeing somebody in trouble, and don't stop. And don't stop. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. There's something I don't understand, but there's something I think that God is. If I see somebody in danger, I don't assist him. Then I make myself, according to the law of men, uh, uh, damned. That means that somebody, yeah. That, that means that somebody can take me and find me. That I saw somebody was in danger and didn't assist him. And then I will go in jail for that. I think that is the every law of me. Not assistant in person in danger. <coughs> so even the law of men, if somebody is in a danger, and you see, like, let me let's see an example. You go in the road. You see somebody, people are beating someone, someone, and are beating someone, and you don't assist the person, then they might fire you to not do that. Uh, they, they might sue you. It's a difference between fire and sue. Okay, they can sue you. Amen? Even the law of men recognize that. How much the law of we so we are walking around those people, brothers and sisters, around us of people who are in danger. They are wounded. They are in the hands of the devil. He already blinded them. And what is our reaction? No, I'm very busy. I have to go to church and pray. How can you go to church and pray? How can you, let me tell you this, how can I sit in a bus, going to the church, sitting to somebody next to me, who is in the hands of the devil, I'm going to worship, and I, he's sitting next to me, 
and I don't have the courage to open my mouth and say, God loves you. You see, you, do you understand the things? How can I go every day at my workplace, working with people around me, knowing that they are going to hell if they don't know Jesus? I see them wounded because I was wounded too. I was in the hands of the devil too until somebody had mercy on me and somebody showed me love. Somebody came to me and brought me the gospel. I don't understand this, brother and sister, but no one in this room got in the got in the, in Christ because they have a dream in the night and God spoke to them. I believe that God put somebody next to me who brought me the gospel. And now that I have that gospel, now that I have that truth inside me, now I have the Holy Ghost, I see people around me. But I don't even care. I'm so busy with myself. I just imagine this high priest when he saw this, this, this certain man lay, laying on the, on the floor, wounded. I can imagine that he was in on his own journey. He has his own plans. Perhaps he was going to, to buy a, a, a burning a essence for the Lord. I don't know. This Levi, perhaps he was on a mission to do something, perhaps to collect something for the priest. I believe inside him he might say, I was doing the right things. I have to hold it up. But he saw somebody in need and didn't stop. And that's what we do all day. We saw people around us having problems, but we don't stop. We don't care. Some of you will say, I'm too shy. I don't know, I'm too shy to, to, to bring people. But brother, if you see somebody burning, you would be too shy to take water and help him. Let me tell you something. Somebody who don't have Christ, he's wounded. He's burning. That's what I'm telling you. We need to be careful that we show love to that certain man. We are so busy with ourselves. Oh, I need to go to you. You know, uh, uh, you, 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 are, you, are, you are in the store buying things. You are so, you are so, you, you are so busy with your own list, doing this, that, 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 that you don't take time to think, hey, the one next to me, if Jesus come back now, he will not make it. On the job, there are people that will never speak to their neighbors. You know why? Because they, they love their, 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 their job so much that they, they are afraid. If I speak about the gospel to these men, perhaps they will serve me on my job. You, you, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? I, there are people that cannot speak to, the, to their neighbors about, the, about Jesus. Why? They are so shy. If, if, if I speak to them, they will, they will not, you know, they will not consider me anymore. They will, you know, such consideration. And I believe this high priest, this, this labor, they might have such ideas, but he saw them higher when we see somebody in need. Why? I sometimes ask myself, God, why? Why is it like this? Why is it like this that I will be faithful to my church? I will be faithful in prayer. I will be faithful in reading my Bible. I will be faithful in meditation. But I cannot share that with somebody else. I'm very glad when I go to the church on Sunday. But I cannot invite somebody. 
I'm too sharp. I'm too, I'm too. You know, there are even people who are there, they cannot bring, they cannot speak often, they cannot invite somebody because they feel ashamed. You know, there are people they are ashamed to be Christian. How can you be ashamed to have the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Somebody say, help us, God. So I'm here to tell you today, brother, and I, I will not be very long. I will even, I'm even, I'm, I'm really, I even don't know what to do. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. The Bible said that they will know that you are for me from the love that you have for one another. The Bible said, love your enemy. Because they assume that you already love your friend. Love your neighbors. Love this certain man that you will see next to you in the road. Love this certain man that you will see next to you in the bus train. In the bus, in the, in the, in the, in the bus, in the train. Love the next, the, the, this certain man that you don't really know that you are sitting, he was sitting next to you, to you in your office. Love him. Love him. Consider the fact that he's wounded. Consider the fact that he's in the hands of the enemy. Consider the fact that, that there is a thief who keeps him bound. Consider the fact that, that the love of God was manifest towards you when you was when you still when you still when we were still sinners, he died for us on the cross. Consider that the love that the love of God was so strong that he put somebody next to you as you were that certain man to bring you life. Consider that if this person that God sent to bring you the gospel, if this man or this woman had the, had the same attitude as you have today toward your neighbor, where will you be today? Will you be full of the Holy Ghost? Even the world say, don't do it to the next, that you, to your neighbor what you don't want to do. That don't do something to your neighbor that you, to your next that you don't want people to do to you. I would not want somebody to see me in trouble and to not help me. I would not like. I am pretty sure you would not like to see somebody in a great deal of trouble and not help you. But that's what we do. Then, because we are so busy with our own self. We are so busy about so careful about what people will say about us. Oh, if I tell him that he will not even answer me and that I would be ashamed. But who cares? It's all about, it's all about bringing the gospel. Because what he did, what the Samaritan did, he didn't do the whole work. He didn't do that all. He just started the work. He just started. He just do the like, what we call the first uh, the first evil cause. First first evil cause. He just started. And he said, okay, I cannot do all. I will let I will let him and put it in the hand of other people. And that is the same. When you bring the gospel to somebody, you are not doing all, brother and sister. You just started. You just putting a soul, you just sowing something. So when you start, you will not see the result the same day. You will not see the result immediately. I don't believe that this certain man as soon as he, was, he get he got some bone on his on, on his wound, he just he was recovered. No. He was the beginning of the healing process. So whenever I bring the gospel to somebody, it's just the beginning of the, of, the, of the process. And when you 
started the, the when you started the process, when is the process at the beginning? You just you don't just you don't expect to have the result right away. Amazing. That's why he was that that certain man was in the hand of some of other people. Hallelujah. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? I want to encourage you, brother and sister. We need to have compassion with you from souls. We need to love souls, brother and sister. We need to love people. Not only people who do us good. We need to love them. And I need to understand. If I go to if I go to somebody and bring the gospel. The response might not be what I'm expecting, but I'm sure one thing, I just starting something. It's just, it's, I just saw in something in his life. Who knows? The next person will come. I just started to break something. Perhaps the next person will come, and that would be the one. Perhaps I'm speaking to that person, I'm, I'm not the first. Perhaps I'm not, I'm not the first one. Perhaps I'm the last one. Perhaps I'm the last one with the last word to kill that stronghold, to destroy that stronghold. If I'm the last one, if my weapon, if, the, if God gave me the last weapon, and when I would, I would, I would, I would remove that weapon, everything will be good, and he will start, he will cry and repent. That is good. But perhaps I'm not. The last one. Perhaps I'm the middle one. I don't know. So the thing is that we we sometimes are so focused on on us. I want I want to be the last. I want to be the last weapon. But no, it's not the plan that I bring. I'm the last weapon. I can bring the gospel to somebody for the plan, and he don't even appear to this church. <laughs> but God touched him in one way. And he goes somewhere else. You see, what I'm trying to tell you is very simple. We need to have that attitude <coughs> of compassion. We need to be <coughs> compassionate. We need to love souls. Hallelujah. Perhaps I will try to help him. And he will not even respond. What is the problem? It's not my problem. It's his problem with God. But it's all about me. What do I do right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people that will not bring the gospel to somebody because the last time they brought the gospel, the person insulted him. The person was so aggressive. Okay? If it's that, that will hit them in big room. If I bring the gospel to somebody who's aggressive, that will stop me bringing the gospel. I'll let you know. Let me tell you, brother and sister, and I will finish with you. As a pastor, you don't know how many, even how many people I've, I've already counseled. And you don't know how many people you've counseled for the Glen. You take time for them. And they spoke you on the face. You don't know, but will that will that hinder that will that will hinder you to continue to do the work? No, no, I'm, I'm not. Sure. I'm not sure that is what Jesus wants. I'm not really sure because if it's what Jesus who who like. When they spoke on his face, when they killed them, when they when they brought him to him, he didn't he didn't condemn them all. He didn't stop. He continued. He continued. God forgive them because they don't know what as they don't know what they are because they don't know what they're doing. And then when he will resurrect, he will go among his he will go he will go among his disciples. He will he will find he will look for people. We need to be compassionate. We need to be compassionate. I need to see people the outside as people in need at that certain name. And then asking myself, 
Should I stay in the same road? In the same side of the road with the person and help him or cross him? Going to another side and not carry. Because at the end, Jesus said, ask this lawyer this question. He said, which now of those three think it's thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the trees? Who is the neighbor of the one of that certain man? Who is the neighbor? That question you need to ask yourself. When you cross to some, when you cross somebody, knowing that he might be lost. I'm not even have the burden to take a minute to pray for the person or to speak to him or to tell him the goodness of the Lord. You, have, you need to ask yourself what kind of neighbor you are to this person. And remember that second commandment, thou to be as you as, as you say. Love your neighbor. So which kind of neighbor are you? The certain man. Which kind of neighbor are you? Hallelujah. I want to pray with you today. First thing I need that I, I think that everybody in this house will do. Because I'm I'm pretty sure that no matter how, no matter how to one neighbor, to at least one neighbor, you are not. We need to ask God for mercy. God have mercy. Because I saw this one neighbor, person in need, and I crossed to another side. Forgive me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.